Let's get started, everybody. This is the first episode of the Camping Them Softly Dead by Daylight podcast, and I'm the host, Toxic Teacher. Also, you can find me on all these social media, whoosie what's it says, Toxic Teacher TTV, mainly because I like it whenever people camp and tunnel me, and I love to camp and tunnel, and I love whenever people jump into the chat and just, you know, really just give it to me, lay it in there, make it like nasty, you know what I mean? Anyway, this is the first ever episode, so you are here on a very, very special occasion, and I've got my handy dandy soundboard. If I know the sounds correctly, I'll get them. <laughs> and that wasn't what I wanted, but that was pretty close. So, since this is the first episode, and I am fairly new to this, this is actually my first ever podcast recorded. So I hope you can bear with me while we take some time to figure this out, get a general flow of things, and just see where it goes. So to give you a little bit of background about me, I've been streaming for almost four years now. I've been playing Dead by Daylight since the Pyramid Head chapter, and I would have to look. I didn't do any research before the episode, so I would have to look and see how long that's been since I actually started streaming Dead by Daylight. I played a couple other games before then, and I mixed a couple in, and to give you an overview kind of of the podcast and, and where this comes from, you know, I see this maybe as another way to connect with people to go into some background about the, the stream and kind of how it came to be. I was a teacher, everybody asked that, were you a teacher? Yes, I was a, a teacher. I taught ninth grade AP Human Geography. And my students told me, and this was before COVID, this was about four years ago, they said, hey, you should start streaming. And I knew of Twitch back whenever it was still just in TV. It hadn't even become Twitch yet. And it wasn't really used for that. You know, growing up, I'm a little bit older, so I saw the Let's Plays on YouTube and things like that. But I never really followed a lot of the streaming world. So they tell me, hey, hey, you need to get into that, mister. You know, you have a personality for it. Because I was one of those teachers, you know, very outgoing. They knew I played games and I would play with them sometimes. So anyway, I started to pick it up. You know, I bought all the equipment. I, I got on Twitch and did all that. And I really took to it. And especially during the pandemic, I really got heavy into streaming mainly for my own sanity. But it turned out for my students' sanity as well because I was kind of a source of entertainment to them and kind of an escape. And I remember one of my students had sent me a message. I, I don't know what it was on. And this was a couple of years later. They said, you know, you saved a lot of us during COVID because, you know, you were the main thing we had to look forward to in the evenings. And that meant a lot to me. That just showed me kind of the power of streaming, which I never really thought of in that way you know i was just streaming to to kind of goof around or whatever and then i realized you know it has an impact so i want to go into kind of the where my stream has gone and kind of the the state i'm in now and i know you guys probably don't want to hear all about me but this is the first episode so i'll just introduce myself so to begin with, I had a lot of success early on. I was streaming kind of a multitude of games. I started with Red Dead Redemption 2, you know, just being toxic on there. And that's why the, that's why they call me the toxic teacher, because toxic teacher, obviously. Had a lot of fun with that. And then we went over to WWE 2K. And we had our own like universe where everybody got to pick their wrestler. And, you know, I would call those matches. I wouldn't even actually play the game. I was more just like a commentator. And that was great. And I was averaging, you know, uh, what was a pretty good amount of viewers. I was up in the 20s, somewhere around there. I, I don't think that was for a very long bit of time because I got a new job. I had to leave teaching during COVID. And it just kind of started to fall off from there because my new job, I had to travel constantly. So doing that and streaming, being able to devote time to everything would just, it wasn't realistic to me. So I had something had to go and it was kind of streaming and I would every once in a while. And for any of you who are content creators, you know, if you take your foot off the gas pedal for a second, that's it. 
you're you're going to feel the effects of that and i did it it hurt quite a bit i started to stream again after a few months after i had left that job i wasn't in that job very long started streaming again you know you start to build that following up and up and up and up and up a little bit at a time a little bit at a time and then you know for mental health reasons i in also getting my master's degree i had to you know put a pause on the stream again so it's been very stop and start and stop and start and now i'm you know at a lower viewership than i've ever been and for a while there it was really difficult on mental and emotional health because i made that mistake that all those streamers make is you try to you you I, some of your value into how your stream is doing right you're looking for those clicks you're looking for those followers and i saw so many of these youtube videos on how to stream they said hey don't worry about it don't look at the view count don't whatever and it really hit me and i you know i would get out of you know my office and my wife would be there oh how's it going you know how was the stream and i you know there's one person got one follower but, you know nobody chatted I've literally had streams with zero people in them. It's just me talking to myself for two hours. And that was very difficult for a certain period of time. And, and from time to time, it still is. I can't say it, it always, you know, it goes away totally. But it does get a little bit better. And how it got better was I realized that the viewers weren't what was really important to me and what I was chasing. I think what I enjoyed most whenever the stream was at its biggest was a sense of community and connection that it gave me. And that's what I'm looking for now. I'm not looking to have a hundred average viewers because if i can't devote the time to those hundred average viewers what am i doing you know i am providing a, a product right i'm providing entertainment and those hundred viewers will eat it up subscribe merch blah blah or, you know even if it gets to a thousand heaven forbid but is that the kind of community i'm looking for in ia I don't know about that, but to have even a small community of people that care, people who check in with each other, you just have people who, who learn each other from the stream, who get to know each other, who become friends, who play games online with each other. That was something special to me. And I guess I'm trying to chase that. I'm not trying to chase the, the number so much. Anywho, that's my story, and I just wanted to give that to you. So in case you're listening to this for the first time, you'll know if you're just now starting on episode one, you know a little bit about me because we'll probably end up talking about it again. Or if you're going back through all the old episodes, maybe this will explain some of the uh, some of the reasons I do all this crazy stuff. So. Uh, the one Dead by Daylight thing I did want to get into today, and I'm not going to go into everything on it, was I wanted to go into the new patch, and I know it's been done to death, right? Everybody has talked about this patch nonstop, 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 and everybody's got an opinion on it. And I've listened to a few of the, the critiques and you know have my own have my own take obviously and just fyi i am i am a killer main don't play survivor all that much just because I'm, i i can't stand these survivor mains you know what i mean and this is tongue-in-cheek by the way if you're going back and listening to this this is a tongue-in-cheek survivor uh hating podcast i don't truly hate them they annoy me sometimes and we're going to talk about that from time to time and by from time to time i mean all the time but, uh, you know, it's not meant to be malicious. It's more tongue in cheek. The one biggest thing I wanted to talk about was the generator issue. And I know a lot of people have said something about this. And I believe, you know, a few people have said that they think it's a good thing. And I'm going to vehemently disagree with them on that. And if I can read a little bit, I've got an article here from like MP First, I think is the name of this website. Uh, it says the goal uh, with this update is to bring an end to excessively long matches and at the same time improve the killer's ability to damage generators where, you know, you're just boom, 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 boom. Uh, this might actually be from the patch notes and they just put it on the side anyway. 
Going forward, each generator can only suffer from a maximum of eight regression events, where a regression event is any time the killer or their perks removes at least 2.5% of the generator's progress in an instant. An indicator will show the killer if a generator can no longer be damaged. That part is good. That part of this is, is one of the few saving graces of this. In the overwhelming majority of the games, this will not come into play. However, in scenarios where the killer is defending a set of generators and refusing to chase survivors, there will eventually come a point where they can no longer damage a generator, helping bring an end to excessively long matches. At the same time, we want to address a point of frustration for killers survivors working on a generator briefly to stop it from regressing or gen tapping for short given that the number of regression events is now limited stopping a generator from regressing is more meaningful than ever to prevent survivors from tapping a gen to negate one of these events we have made two changes number one base damage from kicking a generator has been increased to five percent and at least 5% of the generator's total must be repaired to stop progression. Otherwise, it will begin regressing again when the survivor stops repairing. Now, here's the problem. There are a couple of good things on here. Obviously, you know, the three gen is not a great thing. You've got matches running, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes with no conclusion. I've had that happen a number of times, sometimes intentional, sometimes unintentional. But when it happens, it's a pain. And even as killers, sometimes I just I just let them go. It doesn't even matter at this point because all they're doing is, you know, they'll start working on a gen, you get to it, they run away off into the bushes and hide and then you go to the next one they run off into the bushes and hide heaven forbid you hit somebody then they're you know off on the other side of the map you got to chase them all the way down the problem with this though is that you will see that exact scenario where the killer has absolutely no other option you hit somebody they run what do you do next I would, I would really like to get some clarity on what you would even do because you hit somebody there's three gens right you hit somebody you knock them off gen a gen b and c are both being worked on you knock somebody off gen b boom they run off into the woods gen c being worked on you boom knock them off in the woods you do your you know your gen kicking you're out of kicks now what your only option is to just patrol those gens the survivors never finish them they just hang out and watch you spin on those gens for an hour or you chase the survivor down you get them you hook them they finish another one of the gens and then that's it or they could just simply hold you hostage at this point and for all those survivor mains who said, oh, killers are holding us hostage. That's terrible. How dare they? How dare you? this the worst thing that's ever happened, right? Because killers do everything wrong. You know, you don't play exactly the way they want. You, you, you blah, blah, blah. anyway, it, we're going to see the, the shoe on the other foot. Now, I feel like unless this has somehow been I'm reading this article. It was on the 8th. This is three days. It may have changed. I'm recording this on the 11th. So it may have changed, but it seems to be a huge problem that I don't know that they've thought about. Uh, I don't know if they've looked at this. It'll be interesting. I'm going to do my own research on that. And if you guys are on any of these podcast platforms, you know, uh, submit a question or a comment, or you can go to any of my, you know, on YouTube, The Toxic Teacher, on everything else, Toxic Teacher TTV. You can find me there. Let me know what you think. I'm going to, you know, upload this. I'm going to try to do maybe in every other week podcast if possible and we'll see where it goes from there I hope you guys enjoy it I hope we can have some value out of this you know someday maybe a co-host maybe interview guests or something like that you know it, it's hard to say early on where it's going to go you know just for now just getting one episode at a time uploading it promoting it that's about all I can do. But if you enjoy it, please do what you need to do. You know, like, subscribe, thumbs up, five star, all that stuff. Find me on any of the socials and I'll be around. You know, like I said, the community is the number one thing. So if you need a place to be, you want a place where you're appreciated, even if you are a survivor main, you can always come by and I will see you next time. And I need to have that catchy 
outro, right? Like some kind of catchy thing I can do every episode. So you're like, oh my God, he said it. But I don't have one of those. So until next time, this was the Toxic Teacher or Toxic Teacher TTB, by the way. I need to get that uniform, right? Don't I? I think so.